How you doing, buddy? He was playing. He was playing a part of that all this morning, Steve. <laughs> Good. How you doing, there Clark? You there you go. This is this is his first Zoom call, Steve. Oh, good. Okay, I am back on the Talk Music Podcast. It doesn't get better than this. The one and only Steve Gads. Um, it's an absolute pleasure. They say that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. I sincerely hope that this man feels the same because I've stolen more drum fills, drum beats, drum grooves from Steve Gadd than just about anybody that I can think of. And we'll get into all of that. Steve, it's an absolute pleasure. How are you? I'm, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And listen, the book that everyone's talking about, um, Gadamance, I got my copy, um, as I told you on the phone, uh, delivered to me the other day. The book is excellent. Take us right back. How did this come about? How did you decide at this point in time that you're going to write a book? Mm. Well, the, the pandemic happened and I ended up with a lot of time normally that I don't have. And, um, I just, I started out uh, enjoying the time off, but then I wanted to stay in shape for when, when work came back. And I started doing, rather than playing on the kit, I was uh, doing, you know, I had sticks with rubber tips, you know, all over the house and I was just playing on everything, you know, uh, to just stay in shape. And, uh, and I started, uh, the, the more I, the longer I stayed with it, uh, the more, you know, new ideas started to evolve and I started writing them down because they were things that, they were sort of new approaches to old things that I had never done before. And it was, um, it was, it was fun. It was exciting and I wanted to share those things. So, uh, I mean, I wasn't, uh, and, and I, you know, I finished, I just started, you know, documenting these things I was, I was practicing and, uh, and before I knew it, I had like almost a book and, um, and I decided after it was, uh, after the material was almost all complete to, to see if I, if, uh, anyone would be interested in, in putting it out and, uh, I can reconnect with my old friend Rob Wallace, and uh, and here we are, man. He was uh, the rest is the the book's done, man. So I'm happy about it. Yeah, you must be really proud of the book. I I am. I mean, I uh, I was hands on all the way, and I learned a lot. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, what I had forgotten you know, about things, you know, in terms of things that I think are important about reading music, you know, and, um, and presentation, uh, and handwritten things, uh, all things that I, I, uh, loved growing up as a drummer and, you know, with the age of computers, a lot of that stuff went away. And, uh, I just wanted to, reconnect with some of those old ideas and not forget them, you know? When you mentioned that you do a lot of practicing, it's one thing that I've kind of heard in different interviews and, and you and I spoke about briefly before a, a while back. But one thing I didn't ask you, how often do you do you practice? Is it still hours a day? Do you practice when you can? Do you have a routine? How does it all work? No, I, I didn't have a routine because uh, I had been on the road. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would warm up before the gigs and then, uh, you know, the, the gigs themselves were the things that sort of kept me in shape, you know what I mean? Just playing all the time. Um, and, uh, and, you know, when I was, when I was off from touring, if I had a break, I would, you know, you know, warm up every day to stay, keep my chops, you know, good but uh then the gig itself would be the thing that would would you know keep me uh fit you know what i mean 
but with all of this time come on my hands with the pandemic, you know, what would normally be like a 10 minute warm up, and then someone would come and knock on the door and say, it's time for the gig. There were no gigs. So before I knew it, I, you know, I'd start thinking I was doing it for 10 minutes. And before I knew it, two hours went by and it like that, because, you know, I was just having fun. You know, I, I had no, uh, I was just allowing myself to, to do whatever came naturally and, uh, and, and getting back into the rudiments creatively was sort of what evolved from that, from the time off, you know? When someone comes and knocks on that door, when you are gigging, so we're talking pre and, and hopefully soon to be post pandemic for the many years that you've been playing, do you still get a little bit nervous going out or is, is the day of getting nervous before a gig is that long gone? What's your approach? Um, you still get nervous. I mean, you get excited and you get, uh, you get anxious about wanting the, wanting it to the gig to go good, hoping that the sound is good. You know what I mean? And um, hoping that you'll be able to hear everybody. Uh, and those are things you work at in, in rehearsal. But, you know, there's, there, they still make you, they, there's still things that can make you nervous and, and uh, get the adrenaline going, so, which is good. You know, that's good. One person that I think, in a way, shares the same mindset as you and always has a willingness to learn. Um, as someone that you've <laughs> a, a rhythm section buddy of yours that you've been playing in bands with for decades um a man that i would describe as having the best smile in music do you know who i'm talking about um he's the happiest man i've ever seen i don't think you can find a photo of this man when he's not smiling the man that i'm referring to is nathan east oh nathan yeah <laughs> Now, I've watched tons in, um, of footage of, of Nathan playing throughout the years. Um, DVDs, of course, I've seen him play live numerous times. But I'll never know what it's like. Oh, well, you never know, but um, what I would always love to know what it's like being on the stage with him and being up close to him. Just how good is that guy? He's fantastic. You know, he's fantastic. And I we just... Um... He and I did were involved in a project together with um, with Eric Clapton. It was uh, you know an acoustic thing, and I really got a chance to after all these years. Uh, Nathan and I really got a chance to lock in together because we were set up close. It wasn't a real loud thing, and we could really hear each other good. And he's a he's a fantastic man. He's a, a great human being and uh, a great musician. Um, he's a team player. I love Nathan. And, uh, and every time I, I get a chance to play with him and get to know him better, I like him more. You know, he's a good man. He's, he's great. Steve, I interviewed him on, on one occasion over there in the States. And such a professional. And just he's... His whole presence lights up a room, um, as you and you'll know that way better than I do, having known him for so long. And he comes right. in, and he's just so, as you said, totally obliging, totally professional. Um, and it's, I think that has been as great as a musician as he is. I think his personality has been a big part of his success as well, because everybody wants to work with him. Would you would you say I was right there? Yeah, I think that that's you know, that's really important how you get along with people. Do you know what I mean? Um, that's, that's a big part of it. Uh, and, uh, and how, how, how much you care about people in general, it will reflect in just how deep you dig in to try and get the music where, it, where the artist wants it. You know what I mean? It's like, you're in all the way, you know, and Nathan's in all the way like that. We'll talk about some of the other, and, and by the way, we were talking off air prior to starting recording about 
uh, over here right now, soccer is a big thing. Scotland, um, well, with the time that we actually, we're recording this the night that Scotland are playing Croatia, so goodness knows what the score is going to be. It's either going to be a very jubilant Scotland or we're all going to be very disappointed. But am I right in saying that you've got Scottish roots, Steve? Is, that, is there any truth to that? Yeah, my dad uh, was English, French, and Scottish. So, yeah, I'm, I'm connected with you guys. I'm at the hip. Steve, that's you know, a big that's a big victory for us. Yeah, that's for me too. I had a friend. You know the crane, the the crane that's sort of doesn't work anymore. That's where my friend's dad used to run that crane. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend, his name is Billy McGee. His father used to run that crane. Billy used to tell me stories about Glasgow and growing up in Glasgow and and. Uh, I, un, unfortunately, uh, he um, we lost Billy during COVID. But uh, I had a lot of, I mean, I had, he was a great friend of mine. So he told me a lot of great stories about growing up in Glasgow and, and, uh, and his dad and running the crane and his dad used to teach boxing and stuff. It was fantastic, man. Uh, I, I really love Billy, man. I'm going to miss him. But anyway, uh, he he was a, even made my connection with Scotland even closer. So. Oh, that's great! That's great to hear. I, I guarantee you, Steve. There's going to be a lot of Scottish drummers listening to this. You've got a huge fan base over here. In fact, we mentioned the pandemic, which is obviously I'm really sorry to hear about Billy. COVID has obviously been a devastating thing. But as far as lockdown goes, many projects have come out of it, including Gadaments. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. I've got a friend called Paul Mitchell, who's a great keyboard player, and he decided to start a lockdown cover band, a lockdown Steely Dan cover band um, over over the, the last few months, and they're called Lock Dan. That's pretty good, right? That's good. That's good. I like a, bu- it. A, bu- a bunch of Scottish guys. So there you go, Steve. There you go. Um, right, okay, I want to talk to you about a bunch of things. We mentioned the, the, the Scottish, English, Irish, all sorts of heritage there. You've been all over the world. Is there a country that you've not played yet that you really want to? I've never, uh, I've never caught, gone to uh, Egypt or uh, India, and there's some, you know, some African places that I haven't been to. I, you know, I would love to go to all those places, um, because uh, you know, the they have their own, their own musical vocabulary, and um, and it's nice to be able to. Uh, be up up close to be able to see these guys play and and hear and hear what they do you know what i mean um yeah so i'd love to be able to go to those places that sounds great so jumping back and forth here i'm going to get on back onto the book in a minute but i wanted to ask given that it's it's, it's very evident with your your background that your reading is very good I remember you saying that um, before in an interview that your your sight reading is really good when you're learning songs, is that do you score the stuff out? Do you, you know, do you learn the songs? Do you just remember things by ear, or do you sit and score it out? How do you how do you learn all the stuff that you can have? To? I make notes. I make notes. You know, to because it's just too much to remember. You know, I make notes about. I make tempo markings. Um, if I have to count off things, like I, I'll have a metronome there with you know that I can hear where the tempo is and. So I mark down the tempos and uh, as much as I can to remember. You know, years ago, sight read, you used to have to sight read every day because you weren't getting sent things ahead of time. Now, you know, and the thing that improves sight reading is doing it every day. You know what I mean? It's just like reading a book. Your reading improves just by, by, by you know, the more often you see the words, the more familiar they get and the quicker you're able to identify them and it's the same way with music so nowadays there the sight reading isn't as prominent because people get a chance to look at things ahead of time um so it's a different uh it's a different formula uh but still reading music is important because you can you can notate things so you don't have to commit it all to memory you know and um 
you know, that's just the way it is. That's how, how things have evolved. And so, you know, sooner, sometimes things will come up that need to be sight written, um, that need to be sight read. Uh, and, you know, I feel if I haven't been doing it all the time, I'm not doing it as well as I used to. But it's hard to keep that on that on that level if you're not doing it all the time so mm. just one of those things so the the reading is certainly benefited in this occasion because I, I tell you this much steve right genuinely and i mean this the book is fantastic for me and if you remember i, I said to you the other day it's a modern day stick control that's the way that i see it you know and plus what you can do with it around the cat is extraordinary if my wife hears me attempt to play what's on page 34 one more time I, th I think she's going to throw something at me steve how is it you pronounce this oh flaminucci combo flaminucci combo right okay because i thought when, when i seen that written down i thought have i missed a trick here i don't think i've heard of this one and i like to think of myself as pretty knowledgeable so i did a bit of googling and i'm thinking this has come from straight, straight from the, the mind of god right yeah, it was, it was just, just some things that they, these ideas just evolved, you know what I mean? I, I keep practicing the rudiments the way I learned them. And when I was a kid in drum corps writing drum parts, I, I would always try to take the rudiment and use it as many different ways as you could because that was part of the way you got judged on the difficulty of your parts you know, in drum corps, you know, so I always had that in me that and and um, and I guess I, I wasn't finished because I, I sort of went back to that. And uh, and the longer I allowed myself to to be there, uh, these other ideas started to happen. And, um, you know, after so many years of coming up with a new way to do something old, it was uh, it was exciting for me, you know what I mean? It was, uh, I, I just kept on, you know, I kept on knocking at the door and, and new information started to appear. And, um, and I just want, I wanted to share it, you know, because I know the way drummers are, man, they love, they, we love getting, the way we learn is by copying people that we, that we've seen and we liked, you know what I mean? We just, you know, that that's that's how I learn. I hear somebody that they do something that sounds great and I, I want to be able to do it, you know what I mean? I either listen to them and try to do it that way or if you wrote it down, try to learn it that way. But that's how we are. This you one, know? as I mentioned, Flaminucci Combo, it's, it's, I'm just about getting to grips with it, Steve, and I've been trying it around the cat. Right, so when I when I get to grips with it, I'm going to send you. It sounds great, even in isolation on the on the practice pad or in the bit of wood that you're playing it on in the video. But it's a really, really the the book is full of really interesting different exercises in which you always kind of you've got that thing that you always do where you you play the accent and then you move it to the second beat and then the third beat. Obviously, you've you've been quite renowned for doing that, and I don't know how you manage to do it. But you always manage to keep time well, whereas I get lost very, very quickly. It's it's really, really good stuff. Well, you, are you doing it with a click? I'm doing it with a click, yeah. You got to do it with a click, and it's good when you're displacing this stuff. Yeah. After later on in the book, it gets a little bit more complicated with the displacements. It's good to put an accent on one mm -hmm. of the click if you can. Yeah. You know what I mean. Because all of that stuff, it helps you, you know, and it, it's just awkward because we've never done it before. Mm -hmm. Although we have, because we take the same rudiment and just start it on a different beat. So we have done it technically before, but because it's in a new place in the bar, it feels completely different. You know what I mean? So we just have to do it slow and use the metronome to help us understand where one is. And then as it becomes more comfortable, these new rhythms, you know, become part of our repertoire, you know? So that's the way it's worked for me. No, it's, it's great. And just to be clear on what we're talking about, of course, it's the book by Steve Gad, Gadamance, and unknown to me, because I just opened the pages and I started trying the exercises, 
but you need to not be an idiot like I was and read the very first, the contents page where it gives you a code that you can access on a website and it's got Steve playing every single um, exercise on every page. Um, it's ordered very, very clearly um, and you're playing along with a click, Steve. It's very, very good. Um, I wanted to, to really did, help. Did you did you find the, the video helpful? And, and because it was like just done with one camera, you know, shot. So I wanted to be able you to be able to to get an idea what the sticking looked like. Absolutely. To me, it doesn't it doesn't need any bigger production than that. One camera straight on, and it's 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 very very clear. And I've ordered, I've actually ordered the rubber tips that you're using as well um, oh, about good. the house. That's that's going to be really handy too. Um, but no, that's great. The videos are, are very clear and they're concise, as I, as I just mentioned, and uh, very, very helpful. And it's an absolute must for, for any drummer. Um, the the Flamanucci combo, absolutely brilliant. And even the, the warm up at the very start on the first page, that's really, really good as well. It's 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 relatively straightforward in theory, but it's it's excellent. And then when it switches to the left hand, it's, it's great stuff, Steve. You've done a brilliant job. Are we likely to see a second book, do you think? You know, I've got, I, I had ideas left over from the first book that, that I didn't want to over, I didn't want to put too much stuff in there, but yeah, I do have ideas for, uh, for another book and, uh, I'd like to do that. We'll, we'll see, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start working again, probably in, in a few weeks, so I won't have as much time. But uh, I before I before I go to work, I, I you know I've been I've been back in the zone coming up with new ideas. So I'll write down the ones that I, I get to, and then hope for hope for more. You know, as time goes on. Great stuff, and of course, I don't know if you're referring specifically to this, but the Eric Clapton tour starting in September, dates at the Royal Albert Hall next year. Very, very exciting. How much are you looking forward to getting on the road with with Eric and the guys? I, you know, I love being on the road with Eric and the guys. I'm doing something in September with Eric mm -hmm. in the States, but the the tour that he's uh, the other tour that's coming up in 2022. Yeah, I couldn't do it because when that was scheduled, I had already committed to, 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 to James Taylor, you know, I had already made the commitment. So this is, this is Eric rescheduling something mm -hmm. that I, I was not able to do. So I, I don't, I don't think I'll be a part of that. Unfortunately, I think, uh, uh, but it's going to be great though, because I think Keltner's doing it and, um, and Sonny, uh, Emery would be two those two guys. So, uh, but you know, I, whatever, whenever I can work with Eric, it's uh, it's a special treat for me. So, it's great. Um, I, obviously, I'm a huge fan of, of of Eric Clapton. Did you ever get a chance to meet Ginger Baker? I did. I didn't really know him well, but uh, on a couple of different occasions, I met him. And one was in Boston at a Zildjian event. And the other was uh, at, um, you know, I was at, with Eric Clapton at, doing something at Wembley, and 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 Ginger came backstage, and you know we had a little chat then, but not like I really knew him uh, on a real friendly level. But somebody that you, that you have been closer with is uh, none other than than Ringo Starr. Tell us about your relationship with Ringo over the years. Well, I had fun with Ringo. We, uh, I did a couple of his albums in the '70s, and uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of fun hanging out. And at that time, you know, we were closer. We were more in in touch with with each other when he would come to town, or when I went to to London. But since then, he's you no. Know, he, he's got a place in. I think he's got a place in L.A. and London, and. So I don't run into him as much, but we we uh, we send regards through mutual friends, and I know he's doing great. He looks great. Um, he still likes to go out and put a band together and play, man, and and uh, I love him. Oh, that's he's great! 
what what do you think of his uh, what do you think of, of Ringo as a drummer? A lot of iconic drum pieces uh, or drum parts rather in, in the Beatles records. Uh, what what you what's your overview of, of, of Ringo as a player? I I think he's great, man. What he what he did and the way he played the songs and you know the care that he took and and playing what he was playing for the music not necessarily for people watching the drummer and drawing attention to himself it was another approach and it, and uh, and a great one and it, you know we all learned something from Ringo so thanks Ringo appreciate it man thank you <laughs> It's interesting that he's left-handed because I often thought there was something slightly odd about when he was doing Phil sometimes, and I later learned that he was he was left-handed. Of course, when I was uh, watching I this, is... I didn't know he was left-handed. Yeah. So you know, it's even when you know when they were doing the the rooftop gig and the the Let It Be. I think it was the the, the Let It Be kind of end of film performance in the on the rooftop, and um, perhaps. The, the kind of big takeaway song from that that everybody remembers was uh, "Get Back." But even the way that he's playing that that beat, it's it's kind of dare I say it, it's maybe not how right-handed drummers would play it. So I can remember watching that, thinking there's just something slightly odd about the way that he's doing that. And of course, a lot of his fills, he leads with his left hand. Um, I gotta check that. I didn't know that, man. That's good to know. Yeah. But all of those things have an effect on the ways the stuff feels. You know, it's. It sounds, it sounds simple, but mm -hmm. when you try to do it and make it musical, it's not simple, man. It's it's very it's you know it's it's challenging uh, in a way to make the music the best that it can be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he did a great job, man. What a you know. I mean, he's he was changed he was, the world. Oh, I mean, uh, he's a Beatle. End of story. That man was in the Beatles, you know, and it's even like the come together. Who, I don't know who, how would you think of playing that drum beat? You know, it's just such a, who would have thought of playing it that way? It's just, it's, it's that little triplet thing, yeah. Yeah, and just going around the toms, it's just, I, I think it's just iconic. And um, if people say like, some people say, oh, the Beatles are overrated. I think if anything, they're underrated. No, you know what? I mean, everyone... The, 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 you know, it sounded simple, but the stuff isn't simple. It's, uh, you know, it's, and, it, and the, it isn't an accident that, they, that they, they became as popular as they did because their music was, was wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, and it was, uh, it was a real team effort. Mm -hmm. You know, when they were strong, it was it was the Beatles, you know, and it got weak when they started going off and doing separate things. But, you know, when they were young and committed to each other, it was fantastic, man. Oh, great. I need to um, drop some names of the people that you've worked with just to get your thoughts on them, if that's OK. One guy who uh, is just, I think, an absolute legend, Larry Goldings, who you've played with. Uh, many many times give us your thoughts on larry he is he's such he is a dude well i could tell by the smile on your face that you must have hung out with larry right have you hung out with him i've or actually I've, I've interviewed him and i just and I, I follow him on instagram but when i interviewed him he was great and he was talking about yourself steve um and he had the kindest things to say about you no he's great man larry's a man He's a real talented guy, man. I mean, I don't think he never, he never stops thinking about music and he's so, um, uh, he's so good on the instrument and so knowledgeable harmonically and has such a great sense of humor that, I mean, you know, it can, you know, he can take it out, but it doesn't have to get so seriously that you don't have a laugh about it. You know what I mean? It, it's like, uh, He's fantastic, man. I love him. What's the name of the character that he does? The kind of Hans. What's the name? Hans. Of the... uh, Hans. Uh, Hans Groiner. There we go. I like Hans Groiner. Great, just great. He's a funny guy, man. He's a very funny guy, and he's a really talented 
uh, he's just a, a he, he's an artist. You know what I mean? He's just, you know, he's like, he's an artist when he's following people that he likes, who the way they do comedy. I mean, it's like he gets into it. You know what I mean? He's mm -hmm. like, and he and he makes it a part of his his life, and he shares it with people. So you get a lot of information with Larry. Oh, that's Good. great. I need, I need to get in touch with him again. It's been a while. So I'm, I'll, I'll do another interview with him. Uh, he's he's fantastic. So I'm, I'm glad that you've, in, in return, you've got such kind things to say about him as well. Stevie Wonder. I've seen you play with, with Stevie online. I could I found one one video footage of that, one bit of video footage for that. Um, It was Higher Ground you were playing. What was the story there? Was that a one-off, Steve? Or have you played with, with Stevie Wonder more often? No, I love Stevie Wonder. And uh, I just, that was the one time I had the opportunity to play with him, it was uh, and, uh, in Italy. Pavarotti used to do uh, an event, a fundraising event every summer in Modena, outside of Bologna. And uh, I did that a few years, you know, and uh, Phil Ramon was producing it. And one year was uh, Stevie Wonder was one of the guests. And I got a, I got a chance to play higher ground, man. I, I loved it. I think um, Pino Palladino was playing bass on that. Oh, was he really? Yeah, and uh, and might have been uh, Greg Fillingaines playing p keyboard, you know, in the house band. It was a good band. But yeah, I remember hearing that. It was a nice shuffle, man. I'm, I, I, that was, I had a ball. I don't know if Stevie had a ball. But I had a ball, man. It was great. Oh, I'm sure if, if Stevie had you and, and Paladino playing as his rhythm section, I'm sure he had a ball. Absolutely brilliant. I'll run through a couple of names. Aretha Franklin. What was the story there? Was that a live thing? Was that recording when you played with uh, Aretha Franklin? That was that was a recording. Um, and uh, I, I she was, I loved Aretha. I mean, I would have loved to. She's one person that, it would have been great to go out and play live with her too you know what i mean um but uh the, the i at least i got a chance to do something in the studio and you know not that i got to be friends with her or got to be know her really well but at least i got up close and uh, that was good enough for me hope some of that stuff rubbed off on me you know what i mean absolutely out of all the records that you played on, do you have one that stands out as being one that you're most proud of? You know, I, I'm, I don't, I, you know, I, I'm proud of all of them. Um, there's ones that, that didn't ever get heard that I th wish that they did. You know, Maggie Bell, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So we did an album with her, Maggie Bell. Um, really? Yeah, back in the seventies, man. That they, uh, Jerry Wexler, produced it at Atlantic, and uh, I had a ball playing on that album, and, and that was uh, that was with Ralph McDonald, and uh, I think Richard T was on that album, and Chuck Rainey overdubbed, and. Um, yeah, we had a good time. I, I think it's called uh, Queen of the Night, Maggie Bell. I need to check that out. Maggie Bell is amazing. Absolutely. She's she's great. And I didn't know, and that's, I, I had no idea of this. And Chuck Rainey played the bass on it. I don't know well, why I, mean, I don't this know this. Was, I, this was an album, I, one of the first albums that I ever did at, at Atlantic Records. So I mm -hmm. remember it. And... Um, uh, and I remember that was the only time I ever, you know, worked with her. But man, what a singer she is! Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah so, it's, it's such a great singer. Yeah, there there were some early albums I did with people that. Uh, I mean, I don't think about that stuff. But when I when, you know, I did an early album with Bonnie Raitt too. That that uh, I had forgot about some of this stuff, and I heard she did a. She's been playing a. <clears throat> she's been when we go out with james taylor sometimes bonnie will 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 share the bill 
and I heard her doing a song that I forgot that was on the first album that I recorded with her. And I remembered the song, it's a beautiful song. Um, and I had forgotten about it, but uh, yeah, it reminded me of that album. So it was a, a pleasant memory, you know. But I, I don't really, you know, stop and think about things that I've done before. I try to just think about what I'm doing and, um, and making whatever I'm, I'm doing, you know, one of the most memorable things. You know what I mean? So I can keep it all in the present. Okay. No, I'll, I'll need to check that stuff out. It's, it's. I kind of had a feeling that you would have played with Bonnie Ray because obviously playing with Clapton so so often and all these guys. They kind of, you know, there's there's so many blues festivals and of course Crossroads and all the rest of it. So I kind of hedged my bets. You would have played. Did you get a chance to play with VV King at all? Well, we did. Uh, Eric produced an album, Riding with the King. Oh, did you play on that? Yeah. So. Oh, um, great. I, yeah. And uh, yeah. So I got a chance to to play with BB, and that's when I met uh, Eric. Brought Billy Preston in on that album, so that's when I first time I got a chance to meet Billy Preston. Oh, that's really cool. Of course, I'm very familiar with the album. I think I've actually got it down the stairs on vinyl, but I didn't even know you played on it. So there you go, Steve. Every every day is a school day. So we'll get back to this Hudson music. Um, the the book Gadaments, of course, out now. Um, available online. Hudson Music, I think I'm right in saying that the up close video, I used to have this on VHS. I think that was done through Hudson as well, all those years yeah, ago. I, yeah, up, up close and in session. Up close the, and in session, yeah. Yeah, the, those were the, I think up close was the uh, first educational video they did. Oh, you wow. know, and, uh, and I like those guys. I've done different projects with them over the years. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, after I had the, when I finished the book, that was just a natural call to make to people that I had, I have a good relationship with that, that I trust and, uh, um, and I feel like, like they feel the same way about me. So, uh, so far everything's working out good. Man. Between, between the, yeah, that's the one. Then you flip it right around. Well, like just that. do it real slow. Okay. So you're playing away, and then you do that. I've not, I've not seen, I've not seen anybody do it. So I think so, I'm going to copyright it. So it's like, in other words, instead of being like this. Yeah. It's not like this. It's like, yeah, you go right round, so you go like that. Is that it? I do the one where you do it in the two hands, so you go like this. So I'm pretty sure that's mine because I've not seen anybody else do it. Yours is with the right hand. I do the right hand and the left hand at the same time. That's the idea, Steve, but what to do is you just, it's more of a wrist action. Just watch the elbow doesn't come up too much because if it's, it's that, you're doing it kind of that way. Yeah. It's just a it's quick hard wrist action like that. So you're kind of, you're basically doing that. That's tricky. It's, it's really hard, but it's hard to get the control over it. Well, it's hard. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. You your wrist really is flexible. So there's 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 a cool little thing. I'll I'll video this and I'll send you. Well, you're you're basically. So yeah, that's it from that angle. Then. So yeah, it's tricky to do, and I've, I'm at an awkward angle here. But I'll film it and I'll send you, and I'll try and slow it down. But it's. You'll, you'll be sitting for hours because it's really addictive to do. And once you see it happening, then it's it's really cool, you know? I'll have to check it out. I'd like to learn how to do that. Steve, absolute pleasure talking to you. The book, once again, Gatherments for any drummer out there, it is an absolute must. The drum book that everyone's talking about, none other than Steve Gad. The videos, 
online. You get a code within the book that takes you directly to a website and everything in the book. Steve plays. Book's outstanding. You can play the stuff around the kit. It's great. Steve, absolute pleasure talking to you today. Thank you, man. Good to talk to you, Scott. Thanks.